Hi everybody, today is April 13th, Sunday morning, and this is CDOD number 10. I have um, kale, a good amount of kale in there, some green beans, and then something new, some carrots. I have carrots, I think I have 10 of the little mini carrots. And then I have about five pineapple chunks, and then I have just a little tiny bit of blueberries. A half a banana on the top there. Um, one teaspoon of wheatgrass and one teaspoon of spirulina. I'm instead of um, protein powder, I'm going to use low-fat cottage cheese just for something different, um, just a different combination, different nutrients, and um, I just got done watching a um, webinar about riding, riding horses, but it's um, a lot of stuff that I teach when I work with my clients. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and it, again, um, you know, when you ride a horse, um, what you are feeling in your body, your your emotions and, and the tensions in your body, a horse shows that. A horse will show you and mirror those things that you have in yourself. And when you adjust yourself for the way that you think or see things, um, your horse feels it too and your horse acts differently. So it takes an inner awareness to um, change some of those things. So this webinar was interesting and was about, she talked about um, soft eyes and I, ha I have soft eyes when I, when I train. I think in order to um, get into that aware inner awareness state um, that mindfulness to be mindful and to be in the present and be all the way in your body you can't do it with hard eyes you can't be totally focused on the mirror if you're standing in front of a mirror and you're drawn out my doggy wants in hold on one second come on come in the door's open Um, hold on one second, I'm going to pause this. <laughs> um, if you're standing in front of a mirror and you're watching yourself work out and you're t totally um, in, you know, looking at the mirror and drawn out of your body, you're, you're going to have hard eyes. Soft eyes are when you come back in your body, you're using the mirror as a guide, um, a guide for, um, how would I say it, to see your form, not necessarily to be drawn out to look at yourself. <laughs> you're not being drawn out to look at yourself or admire your muscles. You do that after your set, or in between your sets. <laughs> during your set, you want to be pulled back into your body and um, I call it like soft eyes is kind of similar to like your peripher peripheral vision where you're back here, you're in your body, you're feeling the muscle that you're doing, that you're using and you're, you're using the muscle that you're using. So you're inside your body um, and you're almost, it's like you're two places at once. You can see the mirror, you can see your image of yourself in the mirror, but you're really back here feeling and being aware of your breath and your heart rate. She talked about that too, which I thought was interesting. Um, to, she, she, and I didn't sit on a chair, I was just sitting on, on the couch, but I did it and pretending like I was on a horse and holding the reins and adjusting your your um, back. She had a s arch and then um, pull it forward too much 
and then find a spot that was comfortable, which I called that neutral spine. You want a neutral spine. So when you're working out, you don't want to be too much of a sway back, and then you don't want to pull your um, tailbone in too much um, because that's going too much the opposite direction. So when you're sitting on a horse, to get the flow out of the horse, um, you're actually doing a new, neutral spine like that. And when you're work, working out, you want a similar feeling. You want that neutral spine. That neutral spine is going to help you get centered in the body um, and, and, and actually um, increase the flow of your energy better so you're more whole. So it increases the flow when your spine is just right. It um, allows you to um, be in your body all the way, more centered. You can actually, you actually are then aware of your, your heart rate. So sometimes if we're too, too sway backed or too pulled in this way, it cuts us off and we're not aware of our heart rate and really totally in our body to know where we are in our bodies. So playing with that and finding a spot where your spine is neutral, that's neutral for me right there because I can, I can engage my core, I can breathe, my breath is the best, everything becomes more effortless when you do that, when you get that spine neutral. Um, and a point came up in there about um, being rigid, rigid in, in the lower back or even in the hips, which when that happens when you're riding, it changes the way that your horse goes because it feels what you are doing in your body and it affects the way that the horse's motion flows. Same thing with working out. If you're too rigid in your lower back or your your hips, the movement of your exercise is going to be choppier and it's not going to flow. Here we are back to the flow again. That's the second chakra <laughs> is flow. Carrots are good for the second chakra. So I wanted to do is a a different orange food today for the second chakra, but the second chakra keeps coming up, and I think that has. Um, I'm I'm gonna read more. I got my got my book out again, so I'm gonna really look at that because that's something. Because she talked about sometimes when that's when you're um, rigid or you have tensions in your body, um, especially when you're riding a horse. I'm. I'm learning how to relax more. I have, I think, a fear of being relaxed and flowing. It could be something from, like an issue from my past, being younger or something that I'm like holding on to that doesn't want that area to flow as much when I'm riding a horse. That second chakra deals with the connection with um, another person, animal, relationships that the duality so the duality is you and something else or the connection to the to the weight I can do it with the weights because I've done it for so long but I'm learning how to apply that to um, a living thing um, something that um, has its own feelings and emotions where a weight doesn't but an animal or a person does and I know, I think it was back in 2009, maybe, 2009, I got bucked off of one of my horses. And I think part of that fear as far as riding a horse, it's hard to let yourself actually totally relax when you have that fear of um, you want to be ready in case something happens. So um, I'm going to really look into the second chakra and what it talks about, like the issues and, and the different fears and stuff like that. But I thought it was very interesting um, 
what she talked about in the soft eyes and it's amazing how when you have attention in your body if you look at that body part and look at it with soft eyes how it dissipates how that tension just kind of like goes away and, and melts away um, I think that's about it <laughs> I could probably keep going, well, we're only at 10 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I should go longer. <laughs> um, I think that's a good ending point. I just thought that was interesting. That was really interesting what um, what she talked about and how um, the, the energy work and, and, and the chakras and stuff like that, it's amazing how that can help you with whatever it is that you do, whether it's working with horses or dogs or... Um, the weights, you know, lifting weights. Like I said, I've been doing, combining some of the energy stuff for a long time with my clients and myself. And I actually see, I think it help, it, it helps, it, it has helped me to learn how to explain what I'm sensing or feeling in my body more. I think some people are maybe naturals at some things compared to others and other I mean everybody is is a natural at something lifting weights has kind of been something that I'm I just kind of like picked up and did um, learning how learning about energy and how to put the two together has actually helped me to explain to my clients and, and to you guys in some of my videos and you know some of the videos back a, I don't know a couple years ago or so when I was filming my workouts and talking about form it's helped me to see the little differences because sometimes just a difference when you're doing a curl the difference between doing that and doing this with my wrist back makes a huge difference in the effectiveness of the exercise. Um, being inside your body and doing that compared to being outside and moving a weight, which actually those, those go together. When you're doing this and you see somebody curl their wrist in this way, they're just lifting a weight. They're not really inside their body. This is just from my experience working with my clients. The weight's attached here. So when you come up and you do this, you're lifting from the outside is what I would call it because you're, you're lifting the weight from down here up to here and back. When you forget about this and break this back and lift from here, and forget about the weight. The weight's attached to your hand so you can feel this. When you lift from here, and you come up and you let that wrist stay back, you get a tighter contraction here. It puts you in your body more because now you're, you're more inside, lifting from the inside and not lifting a weight. The goal isn't to lift the weight, and the goal isn't to get the weight as close to your shoulder as you can. The goal is to keep this back and make this the tightest contraction that you can. In order to do that, you have to lift from here and lift from the inside. And now I'm saying this, use a lighter weight when you do this and learn it, when you're first lear learning this, because what it does is it teaches you how to actually lift from the inside because your focus is at your wrist instead of your hand. As you get more comfortable and break the habit of wanting to go back this way, um, you can start to use heavier weights. And when you use heavier weights, what's going to happen is um, when you come up, you're going to have to keep this straighter. But instead of it going this way, it will have taught you to like keep this straight. So when you do a heavier weight and you're curling up, your wrist is straight and it's locked in place here. But you've learned how to lift from the inside and not just the outside moving a weight. Makes a huge difference if you get inside and do it from the inside out rather than just lifting a weight and doing it on the outside. Um, that's just a, um, 
And that's kind of the difference between hard eyes and soft eyes, too. I think I talked about that a long time ago, um, probably a year ago or so. About I think I mentioned that in one of my videos, um, hard eyes and soft eyes. But that inner awareness makes a big difference in the type of results that you get. So if you've lifted weights for a long time and you're kind of stuck and you're not really in your body, that can help take you to a whole nother level in your weight training. It can um, give you much, much better results. I think it gets into the muscle deeper. It gives you that nice, dense muscle. Um, I think it helps to, um, because you can go farther in a set, go farther into a set where you get to a certain point and most people would stop. When you can go past that point and even past that point and go farther into a set, that's, to me, that's what gives you those nice um, striations and like in your legs, it gives you that separation in your in your legs and the striations in your legs when you can like take it farther and get deeper inside yourself. It takes, takes it deeper inside the muscle. It gives you that nice hard dense look to the muscle. Because you can lift weights and you can get to a certain point. You can get nice separation between the muscle groups and stuff like that. But to me, I think in order to get that detail on the striations and stuff like that, you have to push. You have to dig deep. And when you're digging deep within yourself to push past where you think you can go, that's the, that's the, um, that's the thing that gives you the real results that can take you to the next level. And um, anyway, we're at 17 minutes, so um, I'm going to end on that note, I think, because I could probably like find something else to keep talking about, but I'm going to end on that note. So that was um, CDOD number 10, and we're still kind of focusing on the second chakra and um, getting inside your body. I always used to call that your battery. The second chakra is your battery. That's your power. Um, that's your... Um, flow. We've been talking about flow lately, but that second chakra too is like when you get in your body that way, that is actually where you have to get um, to dig, dig deep. That's kind of like where when you're breathing deep and pushing hard, um, it's coming from down here. So, um, and I'm going to start looking into the first chakra a little bit more too. I know that's your your grounding and you need to kind of be grounded and get into your body um, that deals with um, family family um, survival um, your your basic your basic needs the first chakra is your basic needs it's your um, grounding stability um, food water shelter um, and then we move up to the second chakra. So, um, kind of focusing on those two lately. And anyway, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if you like this type of video and, um, comment below, comment, comment below and, um, tell me what you like. Tell me if you're, um, if you're using the drinks and, um, I was 101.8 this morning. Um, yay. <laughs> Which was, oh, I'll do this in another video. I'll make another video after this. <laughs> Bye.